If my clients agree in writing, can I avoid the need for a trust account and put their money elsewhere? In theory, this is possible. In practice, if you want to stay in practice, this might not be the best approach for you or for your clients. The rules of professional conduct seem to allow for it. If the client gives informed consent confirmed in writing to a different arrangement, Rule 1.15c lets you deposit these funds directly into your operating account instead. But it's not as easy as it sounds. The two key words here are informed consent. To get your client's informed consent, you must provide enough information so they'll appreciate the risks involved. At the very least, your retainer agreement should emphasize that putting funds into the operating account doesn't affect your duty to refund unearned fees, that funds held elsewhere are subject to greater risk, it's harder to get a refund if something goes wrong, and in your retainer agreement, you might suggest the client have an opportunity to consult with other counsel before signing off on a different arrangement. Unlike a trust account, the liquidity of a regular account depends on the stability of the lawyer that owns it. What could possibly go wrong? Bankruptcy. If you declare bankruptcy, a trustee may freeze these assets and prevent you from issuing a refund. Seizure of assets. If your assets are seized by law enforcement, other creditors, or taxing authorities, say the IRS slaps a lien on your money, there goes your client's money as well. Misuse. When client money is mixed with your own, it's much easier to make a mistake and use the funds for other purposes. That's why we frown on commingling. Of course, the worst thing, the one thing that could possibly go wrong, and eventually will for all of us, is death. If you die before fees are earned, funds within an account bearing your name will become part of your estate. A probate court will have control over the funds. By contrast, since funds placed in a trust account aren't your money, clients can get their money back without these complications. If you were the client, would you sign an agreement to place your funds in greater jeopardy? In most cases, it's hard to see how clients would benefit from such arrangements. But a desire to avoid the chore of trust accounting won't justify a departure from practices designed to protect their interests. In short, we may not reduce our professional risk by increasing our client's financial risk. If you're the only person who would benefit from a proposal that places client funds at greater risk, expect the Attorney Grievance Commission and courts to question the validity of your client's consent. Under a judicial microscope, it's easy to find fault with the language of the agreement or the details disclosed. If the client wasn't sufficiently informed about the risks, lawyers seeking to circumvent trust account rules may be sanctioned for violating them. So don't put too much faith in rules allowing for informed consent. When you place client funds at greater risk, you place your license at risk as well.